How you all doing? Uh, Sean with a, a little impromptu video. Um, I wanted to give you all um, concerning David. Now, uh, we all know that David, he loves to call himself the best friend of, of, of God and Jesus Christ. And he's the Moses for this generation. There's no one on the face of the earth like him. Everyone on the face of the earth basically has to bow down to his quote unquote authority and submit to him. And, um, you know, it, it almost sounds eerily like, you know, some sort of like antichrist kind of a kind of a mentality. I'm not, I'm not saying that David is an antichrist. You know, we don't know that yet, but, um, but just the fact that we know the antichrist basically, you know, all nations essentially will kind of be under, you know, the thumb of, you know, the Antichrist, when he does come into power, David is is claiming that, you know, everyone needs to, you know, bow down to him. Even all other uh, professing Christians and ministries, they all need to submit to him, which is kind of, you know, odd. But um, I wanted to come to you all and I wanted to uh, read Exodus 8, uh, basically the first 13, 14 verses. And I want you all to keep in mind David, Moses, and COVID-19. Because it's it's very ironic. Um, you know, David, he claims that he's the Moses of the generation that God has appointed him so. And, um, you know, he's claimed that he's experienced God in a, in a way that's even greater than Moses. Uh, he's claimed that he, sh uh, his face has physically shined like Moses did when he came off the Mount of uh, Mount Sinai. David said his face, he said he was in a grocery store and people were saying that he was shining. And, um, another pastor told him he doesn't need to look in the mirror because he's going to be like Satan, you know, when he sees just how much glory is coming off of him, he's going to become arrogant and he doesn't, you know, he can end up like Satan really feeling himself. Um, and just a lot of, you know, you we know how David is. So I want to I want us to compare and contrast David and Moses and keep in mind COVID-19. And we're going to see how authentic this relationship is between Moses and the things transpiring versus David. And how how things are transpiring in our current world uh, with COVID-19. Okay, so we're going to read starting with verse one. And the Lord spake unto Moses, go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up. And come into thine house, and into thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed, and into the house of thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thine ovens, and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee, and upon thy people, and upon all thy servants. So you, we can just picture this. Just imagine all of this happening, all these frogs just coming out of nowhere, all because Pharaoh would not let God's chosen people go. Okay, verse 5, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying to Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. So, uh, if we remember, uh, when God wanted Moses to go talk to Pharaoh, Moses, initially, he, he didn't want to do it. He said, I'm, I'm slow of speech, I'm not eloquent. And God said, well, you know, you don't think I, I know how you are. I made you. But, you know, basically God cut Moses a break. He said, OK, this is what I'll do. I'll make you like me, God, and I'll make Aaron basically what you would be to me, a prophet. So he kind of, you know, shift roles. So he, this is why Moses is telling Aaron what to do. <clears throat> Okay, so verse 6, And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. So, so real quick, we can see that these magicians were actually able to mimic what 
what real power Aaron was doing by way of God. We can actually see that. So David is so, so bent on uh, manifestations, um, just all of these supernatural signs, miracles and wonders. And we see right here that the Pharaoh had his magicians, how if it was, you know, legit or if it was, you know, it wasn't really anything supernatural, but, you know, they were made to they were basically like illusionists. However, the case is they were able to mimic God's authentic power. So this is just something else just to show just because something is supernatural. It doesn't not it doesn't automatically mean it's of God. And we're seeing that right here. So we're going to keep on verse eight. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs for me and for my people. And I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me. When shall I entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses that they may remain in the river only? And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it according to thy word that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. So we basically see Pharaoh seeing this. And he's saying, listen, can you please go to your God and tell him to take all these frogs away? And uh, Moses like, well, you know, you want me to do this? You know, when, when, when will you let our people go? And Pharaoh is saying, well, tomorrow. So we see it's like, OK, well, if that's your word, then that's, you know, I'll do it off of the word that you will let our people go tomorrow. So we can actually see this authentic uh, miracle happening. You know, this just frog coming out of nowhere. <clears throat> OK. All right. Eleven and the frog shall depart from thee and from thy houses and from thy servants and from thy people that they shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh and Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs, which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages and out of the fields. So check this out. You know, David, like I said, he loves to claim that he's, you know, according to God, he's the Moses of the generation. No one, no one is above him on the face of the earth, this and the third. And it's almost like he's trying to elevate himself above Moses. But notice how God responds when Moses talks. You know, uh, God said that, hey, you will be like me and Aaron will be your prophet. And guess what? It, it played out exactly like that. Moses told Aaron to, you know, stretch out his staff over the rivers and everything like that. And all of a sudden, all these frogs came hopping out everywhere. And now it says that from Moses word to the Lord to get rid of the frogs. And all of a sudden, all the frogs die just like that. So. See this and visualize this and then compare that. Especially for all those who really believe David or maybe they're on the fence about David. They don't, you know, is he or is he not? I'm not really sure. Look at look at how authentic this is. And then think about David and COVID-19. David claimed that by April of 2020, that that COVID coronavirus was going to dissipate. It was going to dissipate. And we see that not only has the coronavirus not quote unquote dissipated, the numbers rise there. I mean, there have been some dips here and there, but the number of cases and deaths rise, not to mention there's actually another strain, if I'm not mistaken, another strain of it going around now. So here we have Moses entreating the Lord. And just like that, 
all of the frogs die. Even to the point, if you look at verse 14, it says they gathered them together upon heaps and the land stank. So you have all these dead frogs that just happened as quick as they came is as quick as they died and were out of here. All off of Moses going to the Lord. Now, we we hear David saying that, you know, people have died from messing with messing with him, talking bad about him and his ministry. He said a guy uh, slid under a 18 wheeler or something like that. And his head got cut off. He's talking about people's ministries have collapsed and just all sorts of things. You know, uh, people have said that, you know, if they leave his ministry, that they're going to get cancer and die like all of these crazy things. But yet we see Moses when Moses prayed or when Moses talked to God, something happened instantly. But with David, he makes all of these kind of open ended. Uh, these open ended kind of like, I don't know if you want to say promises or, you know, he just kind of says whatever, and then it's almost like, okay, now we'll see how it plays out. So just see, we have COVID-19 going around. David is not even in the same building when they do these, uh, when they do their miracles in America, their YouTube channel, they get on live stream. David is not even in their studio or whatever you want to call it. He's not even in there with them. He's basically isolated wherever he's from, wherever he's broadcasting from. You know, he's claiming he's doing a quote unquote shut away. The guy wanted him to do a shut away. But it's so, you know, convenient that once this whole thing broke out, oh, now I got to do a shut away. Once this whole thing broke out, you know, some people think he may be kind of you know, on the run, maybe some people are looking for him, maybe authorities or whatever the case is. But, you know, nonetheless, let's let's just say it is, you know, Corona that he's he's staying away. Why is it that when Moses, you know, entreats the Lord about these frogs, the frogs are dead instantly. But, you know, you're telling me that you're basically even more sore than Moses have a close relationship with God and you can't you know, tell or ask the Lord, you know, can he get rid of this? I mean, and this is not the only one. If we continue to look in this chapter and other and uh, another couple chapters over, we actually see the same thing happen with flies. Moses calls for flies to come up just as fast as they came. When he prayed to God, the flies left. Locusts, he made locusts come up. Just as fast as them locusts came up, just as fast when he prayed, those locusts went away. So here you here we see Moses really talking with the Lord as the Lord instructed him to do. And we see that whenever Moses made a request, God honored it and things happened instantly. So why can't David do the same? He's he's claiming that it was supposed to have dissipated. But then when it didn't, he wants to say, well, you know, you always supposed to wear your mask. And of course, if you don't wear your mask, then, you know, this thing is not going to go away. Well, what a minute. If Number one, this thing is supposed to be basically based off of miracles and just God's awesome power. Right. Why will why will we need a mask if this is going to be something done supernaturally? Why would you why would we need a mask for that? If you can just pray to God, if you have this relationship, you should be able to just pray to God like Moses did. Ask for God to take this thing away. And just the way he did it for Moses, even more so for you. But we see that that, that hasn't happened. We see that it hasn't happened. So I just thought that was kind of interesting the fact that here we have a plague, if you even want to call it a, a pandemic, if you will, that Moses caused and Moses caused it to take away by asking the Lord. And the Lord did it immediately for Moses. But yet here we have David who 
he's not even in the same room with his people. He can't even be in the same room with his people. I mean, you know, you want to claim all this supernatural stuff. That's kind of, you know, he's he's called people cowards and rats and and all sort of little other little, you know, cow, you know, spineless, whatever, like. But yet you you can't even be in the same room with your own people. You know, if you was that, you know, if you was that much the man, if you was, you know, no one on earth is like you, like. I would imagine if you if, if the Lord is just honoring what you say and you can go to your friend and just ask him for things, you should be able to supernaturally just walk around here and be around people. No problem. But we see that's not the case. So I just want to come on here and just show the, the compare and contrast between Moses and David and how when Moses prayed, something really happened and it happened instantly. It wasn't anything progressive or we will see over time. It happened right then and right there. And we see with David, he just kind of talks and he just kind of hopes things kind of land in his favor. And however things land, he's going to twist and contort to either make it seem like, yeah, I, I actually predicted that. Or if it doesn't come to pass, well, it's your fault. Which that doesn't even make any sense. You predict something, you're supposed to already know the outcome, regardless of, you know, what happens. You would have post. You were was supposed to foresee that already. So, all right, guys. Um, until next time, peace.